So this is a tractor mapping for Ableton's push. Now, this is kind of crazy because the push doesn't have a cross fader. In fact, the push doesn't have any faders. But what it does have is lots of pretty colored buttons and some knobs at the top here. So this really isn't intended for any serious DJing, but more of a proof of concept. Uh, let me show you how it all works. All right, so let's start with just loading a track. I'm going to use the upper left button here to full screen our browser. Now I can use the buttons above and below this knob to scroll through various sections on the left here. And then I can use that knob to scroll through the tracks. I can also use the up and down button over here. And then once I've found a track that I want, I can use the left and the right buttons to load them into deck A or deck B. I'm going to go ahead and close the browser there. I'm going to start this track playing. Now immediately we've got a beat phase on the play button. You can see our VU meters up top here. And then I've also got a VU meter on the deck that's playing, and that's to help avoid loading a track into a deck that's already playing. So then up above we have our eight cue points here. I'll go ahead and jump forward to one. Uh, it, these can be deleted by holding down our global shift button, which is the, actually the play button from the push down here in the bottom left. I'm going to delete our cue point number eight, and I'm going to add it back in. So then up above we have a loop section. So the first button here is just loop active or not. Next we've got a loop in, loop out, and then a loop set and activate. So I'll go ahead and set a loop here. So now we're in a loop and you can see the LEDs light to indicate that. I can deactivate with this button. And then I can use a predetermined length that I can set with these two buttons here. So we'll go ahead and pick a four bar loop here and then I'm gonna set and activate with this button here. I can change the length while it's playing. And then jump out of the loop. And then we've got two more buttons here that we're using for beat jumps. And I can set their length by holding down the shift key and left or right. See that moving there. Okay, we'll go ahead and skip the FX section for now. We're going to go to these four buttons, which are our pitch adjust. So when I'm double yellow here, that means that we're fairly close to the center in pitch. I'm going to start bringing our pitch down. We'll see that double yellow just goes to a single yellow. That means we're a little bit on the low side. If we keep going, eventually we'll have both the red and the yellow lit. That means we're a little bit lower. And if we go all the way down, we've got just red lit. And that's the same thing going up, but with green. There's our double yellow, pretty close to center. And then way up, we're going to turn just green on. So I'll get that back down to center. Uh, the center two buttons actually function as pitch bends up and down there. The next four we've got some toggles. We've got filter on and off, we've got flux mode on and off for deck A, we've got a cueing on and off, and then key lock on and off. And up above here we have our crossfader indicator. Now this upper right knob here is the actual crossfader. So I'm going to go ahead and crossfade all the way over to A. Now because there's no crossfader, I spent a lot of time adjusting the acceleration of this knob and I think it feels pretty good as far as you're going to get out of a knob as far as a, a crossfader goes. Um, it's a good balance of being able to get left and right really quickly, uh, but also able to do gentle uh, transitions. I'm going to go ahead and load another track into deck B here. And again, we've got our cue points loaded here. I'm going to go ahead and turn its sync on. Um, we'll go ahead and start playing on a downbeat. And then we'll just kind of fade in gently. Again, we've got an indicator of uh, VU meters on both sides. And what's nice about the crossfader strip here is that we can flip back and forth. These are all activated uh, crossfader positions, left and right. And then 
finally up top we've got our knobs. Now with a limited number of knobs and no faders, we've got to have several different modes. And so I've divided these into default mode, which we're in right now, FX mode, which I can toggle on with this button, uh, EQ mode with this button, and then they all toggle back to default if you press them again. So in default mode, the knobs up top, uh, four per deck, we're dealing with uh, filter, adjust that there. I've got to turn filter on. Uh, then we've got track gain. We've got track volume. And then we've got another way to adjust the pitch here, more with a traditional knob. And again, you can see there are LEDs for pitch down below. Still function the same way. So I'm going to get us back to center by noting the double yellow there. Okay, so that brings us to FX mode, which I'll go ahead and activate here. Now our knobs function as a dry wet, and then knobs one, two, and three per deck. Now I'm in group mode now, um, so that means that these four buttons are functioning in group. Um, this is button one, two, and three per deck, and then this first button cancels all the active effects. So I'll just turn quick delay on, and then a cancel. Now if I hold down shift, I can use the three knobs to select those effects per deck. You can see me scrolling through up here. Nice and simple. And then if I hold down shift and press this first button, I enter single effect mode. And this function is about like you'd expect. We've shifted our knobs now to adjust different parameters uh, for that one. And then our three buttons it's a freeze effect, and then we'll switch back to group mode there. Okay, and then lastly we've got uh, EQ mode here, which I'll go ahead and turn on. The first knob now is a filter again, and then we've got low, mid, and high adjust. We've also got these six are global, low kill, high kill, mid kill for decks A and B. Um, now those are always on, those aren't related to the uh, sections here. Okay, and then we're just going to cover some things that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, basically, the main output volume is handled with this knob. We've got tick on and off, uh, snap and quantize, which I have on right now. Uh, then we have a loop recorder section, so we've got record with the record button. We've got play stop with the button above. And if we hold down shift, we can adjust our loop size here and we can adjust our dry wet and then shift record deletes the current loop all right and then lastly we've got effects one and two on and off for all four decks and then this row i've left blank that's up to you i think it'd be really great for sort of instant hold effects uh, but those are programmable by you All right, so now for a fun part. Um, I've got three more modes here that swap out the eight buttons of the loop section. So the first one that I'll turn on here is a auto roll, or auto loop, I should say, in various lengths. You can toggle on and off. Next is an instant effects mode. Um, so these are various lengths of effect two and effect two on deck B over here. And you'll see that button turn on when I'm holding these down. So this one has a, a delay, fun to play with. And then the same thing with the third one here. Uh, this does the third effect on both decks. And it's important to note that I'm actually in EQing mode here. Uh, so what that means is that while I'm holding down this effect, I can be adjusting the deck's EQ as I go, which is kind of nice. Go ahead and turn that off. Uh, that's basically the mapping. Uh, remember that we've got flux mode up here. Uh, that's a really nice toggle to have really quickly so that you can go into your cue points if you do that kind of juggling. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Oh, and there is just one more thing. You can totally scratch. Or deck B. Well, maybe not really. Or really at all. But it's fun to play with.